We're gonna give you five exercises that you can use if you're in the world of track and field, and we're gonna start right now. So that first key exercise, this is gonna be a movement that can cover a whole bunch of different strength characteristics. It's a movement that's gonna train you to coordinate at very high speeds. It's gonna increase your overall strength. It's gonna increase your mobility and even your logical ability to produce force. So that's going to be a one box power clean. Now, a lot of people are out there right now, a lot of distance runners, I can hear you right now saying, what? A one box power clean is gonna help distance runners? Absolutely, if we think about running an 800, a 15, a 5K, we can use a one box clean to improve our speed on the kick. We can use a one box clean to improve our overall force output and even train that dynamic trunk control. If we're a distance runner and we are a little bit leaner, we have less wobble, that is actually a research-based term, if we have less wobble mass, that's gonna improve our overall stride frequency. That's gonna improve our stride power output. So when we're looking at the realm of track and field, we're looking at distance runners, sprinters, jumpers, throwers, all four of those areas will see some type of improvement in their overall performance by executing that one box power clean. Sprinters might wanna go a little bit heavier. Think about Noah Lyle smashing a power clean. That's gonna help him out of the blocks. Throwers, okay, think about Sam Mattis going to the Olympics in 2021 in the discus throw. That's gonna help him be a little bit more explosive for the discus. Distance runners might do that a little bit lighter. Four sets of four might improve their overall power output for their stride frequency. Jumpers, someone like Tora Harris, he was known to power clean over 300 pounds. And this was a dude that was a 7-7 high jumper. Okay, so all of those areas can improve from that one box power clean. That second key exercise, remember, sprinters, distance runners, jumpers, throwers are included here. They're all doing movements on one leg. Okay, they're all doing some means of locomotion. Even a thrower, a glider, a spinner, a discus thrower, a hammer thrower, a javelin thrower, they're still in single support throughout their throw, just like a long jumper when they're planting to take off the board, just like a distance runner, just like a steeplechase runner. And that's where that next key exercise comes into play. And that's gonna be a single leg squat. Now, all of these athletes can benefit from a single leg squat. It lights up your posterior chain. It improves your hip mobility. It improves your dynamic trunk control and your overall strength. So we're gonna go here, boom, boom, boom. I really like having our throwers in the off season do like five triples on each leg, pushing that to a pretty heavy triple. When we're training our running backs or sprinter type athletes, we might do five sets of five on each leg. Boom, boom. But what we wanna focus on is having that tight trunk, having that ability to maintain that upright posture, lighting up the glutes from a little bit of that forward lean, lighting up the hamstrings and improving our overall ability while we're in that single leg position, okay? So all realms of track and field benefit from the single leg squat. And of course, you've gotta use our single leg squat roller and pad available at garagestrength.com. Now, let's get to that third key exercise. Hip abduction, quad strength, trunk control. Again, these are all factors that come into that next key exercise, okay? And oftentimes, when we're looking at sprinters, they need to have extraordinarily strong quads and glutes. That's gonna help them during the start. That's gonna help them during the drive phase. If we're looking at distance runners, a lot of times they lose a lot of mobility and they get really, really stiff in their hips. So we need to work through a full range of motion and get them to be a little bit more active in a full range of motion to improve their hip stability. A lot of throwers might develop some type of knee pain because they squat so heavy, because they do a lot of weightlifting exercises at very large loads with very, very high volume. So we can come up with specific accessories to improve those areas that might alleviate some type of knee pain. Same thing when we're looking at jumpers. A lot of planting, a lot of high speed action can lead to knee issues. And we need to make sure that there's a good structural integrity or structural stability around those specific joints, around the knee joint, around the hip joint. And that's where this next exercise comes into play. If we take a band here, okay, I'm gonna set my squat stance. 
and I want my toes out just slightly and I wanna focus on keeping my knees out the entire time. Okay, that's going to be a banded squat, but we're gonna add here, you can use a kettlebell, you can use a plate, you can use a dumbbell, and we're gonna focus here, come out, boom, and you're gonna feel that in your hips, I already did, inside your quads, and that's gonna help improve even when you squat, flexing in the gut. Okay, one more. So this is a great accessory exercise, the banded goblet squat. You can do this for three sets of 17 in the off season. In season, you could do this when you're traveling. So if you're a world-class sprinter or a world-class distance runner, and you wanna focus on your leg strength, and you're traveling, you're in a hotel, you can have a sweet band with you, use one of the hotel dumbbells and improve that overall leg strength. All right, this next movement is gonna be a wild ab exercise. Okay, so we're looking at how can we be explosive with our legs? How can we be strong with our legs? How can we improve our mobility with our legs? Now we're getting into a more specific upper body and ab movement. This is gonna be a dynamic movement. And the reason why I wanna use a dynamic core exercise that improves our dynamic trunk control is because of how deliberate we have to be when we're actually running. If my abs are swaying and I'm all over the place and I'm a sprinter running like this, I'm gonna lose a lot of ground when I'm sprinting. Same thing if I'm a distance runner, okay? Go back to the wobble discussion. There are really good research papers on the negative impacts of wobble and extra mass and what that can do to your overall stride length, okay? And if I'm a thrower, I need to train my trunk, okay, specifically so I can maintain an upright posture and really hit the finish of those big time throws. And what we're gonna go into is gonna be known as a walrus, okay? So we're gonna be in a plank position and we wanna have almost like that hollow position, okay, pushing our belly up to the ceiling. And we're gonna actually walk with our thumbs in, okay? We don't want the thumbs up, we want the thumbs in. So we're gonna be in this position here, hold that plank, move forward, and really squeeze through the abs as we pull with the lats. Our throwers will do this at least three to four programs during the entire year. We'll do this really heavily during the off season, okay? And then as we get closer to peaking, we'll start to remove this and do a little bit simpler core exercises. Jumpers could probably do this even closer to a peak. I think distance runners could do this about four to six weeks from a peak, okay? So they can do this pretty much all year. And as you get better with this, you can start to do things where you're pulling a weighted sled with your feet. You could do this with a chain around your neck. You can put a plate on your back. Any way that you can improve your overall trunk control is gonna transfer really well to the world of track and field. Okay, so this next exercise, all the throwers are gonna cry. They're gonna get upset. We got a lot of flack when we followed around Sam Maddox for the entire day of training and we were showing him hit pull-ups on rings. Yes, throwers need to do pull-ups. Okay, so if we looked at distance runners, they don't need a crazy hypertrophic upper body. But if they could get on a pull-up bar and do three sets of five, three sets of 10 pull-ups, that's probably gonna be plenty for them. Okay, sprinters, we also don't need them to be super, super hypertrophic with their upper body, but it will improve their overall running mechanics if they have some upper body muscle mass, just a little bit, okay? They don't need to be crazy, crazy big. And then if we look at jumpers, someone like Mondo, he's gonna benefit a ton from pull-ups, okay? An absolute ton. Now, long jumpers, high jumpers, triple jumpers, they don't need to be crazy, crazy strong with their upper body. They need to be strong enough so they can do front squats, single leg squats, hold that upright posture, hip power snatches, hip power cleans. And that's where this next exercise comes into play. With throwers, you're gonna get more stable overhead and you're gonna have a stronger lat position. You're gonna have stronger shoulder girdle. Okay, I'm gonna show you neutral grip pull-ups. Okay, we're gonna do, let's say five sets of five. And I'm gonna add in a little twist here for the distance runners and the sprinter crowd out there. This little twist is gonna help you with your trunk and with your hips while you're hitting that upper body. So we're gonna get set here. We can do a pull-up just like this, okay? Boom, two pull-ups. Now, something that you can do, you notice that band around my feet, you can pull up and hold. Come back down, get to that hip lock position, come back down, hip lock position, come back down, hip lock position and hold. So that's where distance runners and sprinters are gonna benefit from that pull-up position. They're gonna be able to hit that pull-up and flex their trunk and use their hips 
while they're achieving that upper body strength. That's gonna help them transfer really well over to the track. I know a lot of you guys need help with your training. You don't know where to start with your periodized programming, and we've got exactly what you need to become a world-class athlete. You can head over to peakstrength.app, the Google Play Store, or the Apple iOS Store, and you can download our app, Peak Strength, for seven free days of training. And you can cancel at any time, but the worst thing that's gonna happen during those seven free days of training is you're gonna get five free workouts to improve your overall strength and improve your overall understanding and comprehension of track and field training. Because freaks, at some point, you have to begin that journey to attain peak strength. And remember, if you wanna become a champion, you've always gotta cultivate your power. Peace.